All right, guys, today is going to be a good day. We are going to fire up the sawmill and cut a bunch of boards for shiplap, one of Mike and I's favorite things to do. Mike is bringing the excavator to the bottom to get that whole process kind of started. Meanwhile, I'm up here at the house working on our blog. If you guys have not visited our website, it's something that Mike and I have been working on for quite a while now. The blog post that I'm writing about today is raising rabbits. Mike and I are going to be getting rabbits soon to be harvesting for meat. We've never done it before. So if you've never done it before either or know nothing about raising rabbits, go check out the blog post, learn along with us. Thank you. Okay, I'm all done with that for the day. Heading down to the bottom to meet Mike. We are going to start sawmilling. Hey. Hot. Ooh, How are you? hole. Got the excavator. Oh. <laughs> nice. Okay, what do you think? Let's go pick a log. Pick up some logs. Let's pick a log. That one on the top is millable already. This this big one right here? That the short one. Okay. On the top. Let's grab Let's it. Grab that one. <laughs> Okay, so for anybody who is kind of new to our channel and kind of new to what we've been doing and how we've been building our house, we have been milling the majority of our boards for like the wall rather than using drywall, we are using shiplap. So we've been at this for, I don't know, about a year or two now, just kind of doing the wood as we get it. Recently, we bought this big excavator, which has come in amazingly handy mm -hmm. uh, when it comes to picking up logs. For those of you guys that have been around for a while, you know that we were really struggling with using our old four-wheeler to like get these logs up on the sawmill. It was just a lot of stress and like hassle, but now we have this huge machine. It makes it so much easier. So we have this little, what do you call these? Like log tongs? Log tongs. Log tongs. So yep. these pick up the logs and then like Mike's able to move them right over to the sawmill. So set them right on top. Set them right on top. So we'll show you how to hook it up and grab the logs. So the reason we use these log tongs instead of the thumb is we only have a manual thumb, not a hydraulic one. We can't move it with a button. Once we get it set, it's there. We can only curl the bucket into the thumb and it's kind of a pain to move back and forth. Right now I have the thumb up stowed because I was digging with the bucket. So it's just kind of easier to use these log tongs in a situation like this instead of having to take the hassle of getting the thumb all set up. Okay, we got the log on there all good. There's this tool called a PV um, that really, it just rolls the log super easily and we left it up here back behind the house where we were working last time. Luckily, we have these electric bikes. It's super easy to just zip up and down our long driveway. So I gotta grab that and then head back down.
So just picture a okay. square. Like cutting out this. So like I'm right now I'm looking down the whole tree. I'm guessing to where we would make a cut mark. Okay. And I'm looking down the whole tree. This tree is hard because it's kind of oblong. Yeah, it is. So it might be a little extra. We're gonna, yeah, but as long as we cut off at least two inches wide, we can get a two by four out of it. Right. Okay. It's not just junk. Oh. Anytime you're cutting, I always try to keep the handle right here. Okay. If you want to hold it. Okay. So this is nothing new. So the entire time you're cutting, your hand never can be right here. Okay. okay. Yeah. I know if you can push it here, you can have an hand right there. You can do that. But like your hand, you always need to have something hold it. Okay. Put it this way. Put your left hand right there. So your okay. arm there. Okay. And the other hand there. It's easier to pull that back first. I always go up the crank. Okay. One. Okay. And then it's one, two, three, three, six. Okay. But you know. So since these boards are going to be used as shiplap in our house, in our living room, bedroom, on the ceiling, we want them to look really nice. So we are making a cant out of this log. And what a cant is is basically just a big square beam kind of where you can cut the smooth boards off of that so we've got to get this thing all squared up and get all the rough edges cut off so then you're coming out here and you just you're looking down like you're looking at the edge okay. the inside edge of that yeah. so right here you know yep and you're looking down does it look like we can get a square? It looks like you want to push it that Just way. Just a hair. Yeah. Past the bark, right? Yeah, but I'm not only looking there. I'm trying to look down the whole tree. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay, so there's the line we drew. Let's make this thing square. Cut this side next.
I'd do one more on that edge. Okay, so this is what, this is called the cant, right? Yeah. So this is the cant. This is what the log looks like once you flip it four times and take all of the bark off. You can see that this is a nice, beautiful chunk of wood. So what we're gonna do next is just slice it all the way down, about half inch pieces, all the way down. And that's gonna be our shiplap boards. The boards for the shiplap. They're not really shiplap until you cut the grooves but these are all gonna be the thin boards that'll go on our walls. We're wanting to start this now while it's early summer because we have quite a bit of material to use in the house and it has to be dry before you put it up because wood shrinks as the moisture leaves it. So we want it to sit outside all summer dry so that by the time the end of summer rolls around, we are able to put it up without any worries. That scared me. Is there a bug on my head? Yeah, big one. <laughs> Can you get it off? Oh. Thanks. Bark. <laughs> hmm. Makes the uh, Ten. driveway. Huh. It just popped off for some reason. Yeah, you can see that popped way off. I wonder why. I thought it was going to be broken. Good thing. Interesting. Well, it gives us an excuse to uh, put a new blade on it. Huh, I wonder. So I think we're going to replace the blade while we're at it. Yeah. Now it's ruined. Oh yeah, just got wrapped into this thing. Okay. Alrighty, we figured out what it is. It's a piece of wood in the wheel there. And that, uh, I'll roll this up so you can see, pushes the belt up. Right as, as you roll it, you can see it puts a hump in it. So that's probably what kicked the blade off. Okay, so this is all the boards we can get out of this log. You can see if we tried to go any further, um, the blade would obviously hit a couple different pieces of the mill. So we can't go any further. We have left over a big chunk. We'll probably use this maybe for some two by fours, maybe as a big shelf or a table, who knows? It'll definitely get used. Okay, so that is one big chunk of a tree done. There's obviously a lot more milling that we have to do this summer, which is totally fine. It's a project that Mike and I really don't mind doing. So this is one of the first steps, get the log on there, get it all milled up. In our next video, we wanna show you guys 
how to ship up the boards and what it looks like when you get them on the wall. So stay tuned for that. It'll be a good video. Thank you guys for watching. We really appreciate it. Leave your comments down below and we will see you in the next video.